Hello, Axel Wilkinson here for HitFilm.com and in this tutorial we are going to take a look at presets in HitFilm. You can create a preset of a layer to store specific settings that have been applied to various properties in the controls panel. This could be useful if perhaps you've created an awesome effect that you want to be able to save and use again later on. Well you can quickly make a preset of it so that it would be available whenever you need it. Um, perhaps You've created an effect in one project that you need to use in a different project, and so you need to transfer it from one project to another, or perhaps you need to provide an effect you've created for someone else to use in their copy of HitFilm, while well, by saving it as a preset, you can easily transfer it in those fashions. Another instance when presets could be useful is in grading. If you've perhaps graded one clip to make it look just the way you want, and then you have a bunch of other shots in the sequence that you wanted to apply that grade to, well, you could create a preset from the first clip and then very easily apply that to the other shots in the sequence. Well, let's take a few minutes to look into presets in greater detail. To start with, you'll notice there are two different types of presets. There are 3D effects presets, which include uh, muzzle flashes, the particle simulator, really anything that's been created using any of these engines in the 3D effects folder. And then the second type are 2D effects such as the film looks contained here and then these tools which holds a couple of vignette options. Uh, these are created from a layer such as a plane or a video layer. For example if we grab this media layer there's a number of different effects that have been applied to it and so we can save those effects from this layer by creating a preset and then we could apply these specific effects to another layer very easily using that preset. So going back to 3D effects, if I select this layer again, a 3D effects preset is going to store all of the specific numerical values assigned to the various properties for a 3D layer. So everything that can be controlled here in the controls panel, all of the settings that you can adjust for any of these properties will be stored in the preset. And then also any keyframes that have been applied to the layer. If I open up this layer on the timeline, for example, here are the particles per second. You can see we have several keyframes controlling that specific property of the effect. And those keyframes will also be stored in the preset so that once the preset is applied again, you'll get the exact same effect that you originally had. So to create a 3D effects preset, it's as simple as first choosing the layer that you want. You right click on the layer and choose Create 3D Preset from the pop-up menu. And then you'll get this window, the new 3D preset window, where you can give your preset a name. And you can choose where exactly in your presets folder the new preset will get saved. In this case, I'm going to open the 3D effects and choose the particle simulator. And then there's also an option here at the bottom, you can see, to include layer transformation properties. This just gives you the option as to whether or not to include any adjustments you've made to the transform controls here. You may or may not want to include those. If you've animated some motion perhaps in the transform properties that is an important part of the effect, then you might want to tick that on and include that. But if you're working on a complex project where the camera's moved a lot, then it's very easy for the effects to end up a long ways from the center of the world grid. And then when you add a preset of that effect, if you've included the transform properties, uh, you may not even be able to see the effect at first because it's so far off center. So in most cases, it's best to leave the transform properties out of the preset. So you can either tick that on or off as needed and then click save to store the preset. And then if we open our presets folder again in the particle simulator. There's our ground smoke preset ready to be used again. Okay, now to look at 2D presets. We'll go back to that layer I'd selected earlier. And as we mentioned before, creating a 2D preset basically just stores all of the effects that have been applied to the layer that you're working with. So here we have this layer selected of our background video. And these three effects are all that we can contain in the preset. Uh, anything in the layer properties or in the transform or audio controls, none of that 
will be stored in the preset. We're only looking at these 2D effects that have been applied to the layer. However, these can include basically anything outside this 3D folder from audio down through stylize. Anything that you've applied to the layer can be stored in a 2D preset. And again, if there are keyframes present on any of these effects, then those two will be included in the preset. So to create a 2D preset, the process is fairly similar, except first we need to select which effects get included in the preset. So if we only select one, we can right click and choose create preset, or if we want to select them all, we can shift click to select multiple effects all in a row. Or if you want to select specific individual effects from the list, you can hold control and click to select individual effects in any order. So we choose the effects we want and then right click and choose create preset. We get a similar window where we can enter a name for our preset. And then we can store where within the presets folders that preset gets saved and then we will click Save, and then if we open up our Film Looks folder, there's our preset that we've just created ready to be applied again. Okay, so those are the two basic types of presets and how to create them. Now, as far as applying presets, it's fairly easy as well. To apply a 3D preset, we just grab it from the list there and drag it down into the timeline. And as we get onto the timeline, you can see we get this green line indicating where within the layer order we can drop the preset. I'll just drop it on top and you'll notice we don't see anything. That's because even though it's on the top, because it's a 3D preset, it's still behind the position of this smoke in 3D space. So if I move that effect up, you can see that it is in fact there. It's just buried in amongst all of that smoke. To work with the 2D presets, if I open up the film looks here, and I'm going to use this Desert Intensity preset just because it has a nice dramatic effect. And so as we drag that onto the timeline, you can see our cursor indicates we can't drop it on these layers. They can't accept a preset. But once you get onto a layer that can, you'll get the arrow with that little plus sign under it, indicating that you can drop the preset there if you wish. So I'm going to go to our background layer, and we can just drop that. And as you can see, the effects included in that preset, this, those that are selected, are dropped in after any effects that were previously applied to that layer. Now if I click Control Z to undo that, you can see how if we have the layer opened up like this, when we drag that down, we can actually control where within the order of those effects the preset is applied. And we have that same control if we drag it to the Controls panel. You can control where in the order of effects the effects that are included in the preset will fall. So if we select here, then all of those effects included in the Desert Intensity preset are applied before the Crush Blacks and Whites and the Luminance key. All right, well, thanks for watching. That pretty much covers the preset system in HitFilm. I'm going to hit Control Z one more time to undo those effects because they're not really required on the background for this scene. Hopefully this answered any questions you had on the preset system. If not, let us know what those questions are and we'll try to address them in the future. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see all the exciting tutorials we have in the works right now and we'll be releasing in the near future.